All right. We're going to give another try. Yep. We're back 53 seconds early. Should be good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we just had to get a little bit of reset um, so that we weren't suffering from those that little uh, bit of lag that you guys might have experienced. So I uh, hope it will be good uh, jumping into this next match. Shortly, as soon as the players are ready, we had uh, Cripps. Um, expectations for this matchup, considering he always uh, yep. casts Temple Mage when I, it loses. I do believe Jab has the slight advantage, but I have no faith in Temple Mage in in tournaments. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give uh, Jab the the no faith seal, meaning let yeah. him win. Well, if we look at their decks, you know, head by, head to head, it's basically just Druid Mirror, Secret Paladin Mirror, and then those two decks that you know differ for both of them, and it, it's a tough matchup. I, I think a lot of times. Tempo Mage does win against Agro Shaman, but that's if those two decks line up. So uh, they're not going to line up in this first match. Lead Paint is going to switch it up. He didn't throw out the Secret Paladin. He's going to throw out the oh. Agro Shaman first. Wow, bold move. Well, there's a lot of ramp in this hand, but it's kind of one of those hands where it's just like too good. It's all ramp. Too much of a good thing can sometimes be a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, this type of hand works really well if you if you draw heavy cards immediately. Will that happen? Kind of. Yeah. Well, actually, sure. playing low step off the innervate and still losing really sucks, by the way. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. Especially since Slub Paint, this is what you sort of want in the opening hand for Agro Shaman is just minions. You want minions first, and well, you have to, you might have to trade here because you might have to play around Swipe, because Swipe would just be so soul crushing here. Yeah, but I don't think you can. I don't know. You can't expect him to have Swipe in the first five cards, especially since uh, uh, he threw away a lot. But uh, I think with Agro Shaman, you have to take risks sometimes and just hope they don't have it. And this is the only time in the game where you, you'll you'll like this is the best time in the game to take that risk because it's the least likely time that he'll have the swipe oh he has a pretty good hand here i think um you can either hear power or wrath for one on the two one and just wild growth into an emperor next turn kill the three four for free looks good yeah hmm I'm surprised he hasn't acted yet. It does seem like a pretty clear-cut play. We might have what, lost. What, what is the alternative here? Hero power in Wrath, but... Uh, yeah, we saw his cam DC there for a second. So, uh, looks like we lost the jab. And uh, we'll see if we can get, back, get him back in here uh, in just a moment, but... Um, uh, I think that uh, for disconnect, the ruling is uh, unless it's uh, it's just an auto loss mm -hmm. for a disconnect, uh, unless the other player like will would want to concede the game over. But I don't think that would ever happen in a competitive no. environment. Uh, a lot of it some does happen every now and then, but yeah, yeah shouldn't some, count on that. Yeah, some tournaments have rules where if there's guaranteed lethal on board or if there's like lethal on board, but I, I'm pretty sure if I remember in the past from O and OG rules that uh, a disconnect means that uh, it is a loss for that game over to the disconnected player. And we just got the your opponent left screen from Lead Paint, it seems. So that would be a a disconnect from a full disconnect from Jab. It seemed like it. We'll have to see. Well, that's kind of too bad. Um, I think the Druid could have had a chance there. Um, it, was, it wasn't looking great, but he could have had a chance. Yeah. So, ruling is, it is if it is not a clear and present lethal, which usually means just minions attacking face on board, mm -hmm. um then uh, it is a, a, a loss for a disconnect unless the opponent agrees to otherwise. So uh, looks like uh, since that was definitely not anywhere near a clear and present lethal, 
uh, Jab will be receiving a loss for that match. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we have to um, take a moment to see uh, if if Jab is going to return here. But um, oh, looks like he has. We we have we have received the, the Jab back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, moving forward. That is going to be a win for the Shaman of Lead Paint. So it looks like that mage is going to have to create a bonus win. A bonus win. Uh, you never want to rely on the old Tempo Mage bonus win. No. But uh, no, sometimes, sometimes Tempo Mage can just steal wins. Sometimes Tempo Mage can just steal games. Like an unstable portal. If you can get like a turn five, like Ragnaros, or a, uh, you know, a turn four Dr. Boom... Or a turn five Tyrion four it drink. Have to be that ridiculous, you know. It could just be like a solid six drop off a of turn two portal, like turn one a... mana worm, turn two portal. You get just the better half of six drops. You're in good shape. You get like a Toshley. You get like a Fire Elemental. You get like you get a, a Bolt of Ram Shield. Yeah, uh, no, no, not that one. <laughs> Why does everybody hate on a Bolt Ram Shield? It's well, a, it's not it's not a great um, legendary. Like to put in a deck, but if you get it from a card, a, a three nine is really good. Uh, yeah. The problem with both is you kind of want to play them when you're almost dead, but if you're almost dead, you're usually losing on the board, and then you just yeah. Die. Well, he's just, I, I, he's just kind of horrible. I like the idea of him, but the thing is, you're basically killing both for free. <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the time, every time. You kill both for free. Both, both only has one purpose, really. I know we're a bit off topic, but I thought, let's just cover the bases. Okay? Yeah. The reason both is in the game is so right after you played your Sneed's old Shredder and you're going to win the game off of value, but you have no HP left, there's that small chance you can get both and still win the game. Yeah. There was also a match that happened in the uh, Korea... Uh, winter preliminary, uh, so the the tournament to qualify for the winter championships for Asia Pacific, where a player named Diony, who actually ended up winning the whole thing um, and winning the a- Asia Pacific championship, uh, got a both ram shield off a top deck after he had played Golden Monkey against a Druid, and it saved his life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That Not happened. Bad. That happened. Uh, it was it, uh, very impressive. Happen. Yeah, so it, there's definitely a few amazing moments that we experience in tournaments, and it does seem often a bit surreal when compared to just routine ladder play. Yeah, that's Golden Monkey just adds so much cool things to tournaments. I, I was actually really happy that so many people brought Control Warrior to all of the Winter Championships because we got to see a lot of interesting Golden Monkey play. And we are going to move into game number two here. It is going to be Lead Paint on his Secret Paladin and Jab on his Secret Paladin. The good old Secret Paladin mirror match. If I'm not mistaken, I think um, maybe one player is playing a slightly slower version. I kind of forget which one. So Lead I'm Paint curious. has Rag. Mm-hmm. I think Lead Paint might only have one Secret Keeper. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Okay, he does have Repentance. Repentance is sometimes cut, but Jab also has Repentance, so... Ooh! Mishir's Challenger, and he's on the coin. Yeah, that could be a pretty big deal, but he's also uh, going to have to be winning at that stage. Yeah. And it looks like Jab has the better early game hand, but it's pretty close. Yeah, Shield of Minibot and Knife Juggler are a lot better. Than competitive spirit and haunted creeper. Well, he can coin out a keeper, but that feels kind of bad. Oh boy! Yeah. Ugh. The non-attack. Oh, the Ragnaros on the other side of the board as well. Looks like both players might be playing. Exact replicas of the Secret Paladin. Yeah, exactly the same list. Which is not... Uh, I guess there are a lot of cards that are flexible slots in Secret Paladin. 
Um, some people opt to not go with Secret Keeper. Some people opt to not go with Repentance. Some people put more secrets than others. Some people go with Rag. The fourth slot is different. Some one Blessing Kings, two Blessing of Kings. One True Silver Champion, no True Silver Champions. One Consecrate, no Consecrate. So it is kind of rare to have exact that same list, but redemption. these seem similar. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So this can only be Repentance. So he's got to burn the Keeper before he burns the uh, Mysterious Challenger. Yep. And that sucks. A lot. Especially since, yeah, especially since Lead Paint's not going to be able to get the Repentance down. So it's not going to get pulled from Mysterious Challenger. You know, it's not going to be able to sort of have a, a an answer to the Mysterious Challenger of Jab. So... Unless he picks up, unless Jab completely whiffs on this turn five play, even if he does, actually, I don't even know if there's going to be a way. Yeah. Well, he, he didn't having whiff. this repentance the in hand is so bad. Who am I? None of your business. He's yeah, missing the head of spirit and repentance. Very unfortunate. Oh man, look at that curve. The dream. Doctor six. Doctor seven. And not the real Doctor Eight, but I think that might be the better Doctor Eight because at that stage in the game you're just slaying. Tyrion's more of a defensive tool. Yeah, this is the specialist Doctor Eight. This is the Doctor Eight that the other Doctor Eight referred you to for a problem that he couldn't even deal with. Oh boy. Okay, well you can play Doctor Juggler. Pulls out two secrets from your hand. Doctor 2. Yep. Well, Doctor 4, because the secrets wouldn't be free. Yeah. So basically, uh, it sucks, but it looks like the best play anyway. Mm hmm. Reporting for duty. Nope. Doesn't hit that juggle. Can't even get this 9 damage in with the Mysterious Challenger that he has on board either. Not looking good. Spirit. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that is a ton of damage. I mean, that's just 18 damage on the board with no, Cockhammer. Cockhammer's done, yeah. right? As long as it's not Noble Sacrifice. I don't think Lead Paint's played two Noble Sacrifices, has he? No, it's not Noble Sacrifice right now. It's it's a Avenge and Repentance. Yeah, but does Jab know that? Because he played one of the secrets last turn. So he, he realizes that it's not, so... Just gonna go ahead and push in lethal, and despite the disconnect, Jab is going to tie it up for game number two. Yeah, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Lead Paint has had quite a lot of success off the Secret Paladin list. Looks like uh, Jab might be having the same similar style of success. Often yeah. when uh, I've seen ladder play, though, you don't you don't typically see. Uh... Oh, how you doing? You don't typically see this uh, this list. I feel. I feel most of the players playing ladder play the the full uh, Xmas tree version, like even times two sometimes. Yeah, times two, times two repentance. It's a bold choice. Yeah, I think a lot of players have refined it down to like one ofs of repentance, competitive spirit, and redemption, um, yeah. just because those are the three secrets that aren't as good. And, uh, yeah. This is a no nice eye for an eye. Creeper into Shredder into Shredder. Yeah, maybe he wants... Yeah, I don't think he can... Oh, Mysterious Challenger might change that because you can coin it out, but I don't... Unless you pick up a 3-drop, I think you have to coin out the Shredder. Yeah. And it's not like he won't have a turn 5 play. Because he'll he can have truce over champion, which even though you're floating a man, is still a decent turn five I believe. Well, it might be played next turn. We'll have a look here. Have a little look see. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Innervate he can innervate out of wrath and take out this pile to shredder. The only thing is that ruins oh, his next turn. There's no doubt he's gonna do that. It look he's he's mousing over the shade, and if he Innervates now, he doesn't have a, a minion to play for next turn, but that's a hard play to pass up because that's a really clean removal. Wow, he does do it. 
He commits yeah. an Ancient of War next turn. Alright, well, now... Lead Paint's got a decent... Well, I don't know. He might even not want to play Avenge next turn. I was going to say you can choose over Avenge, but if you play Avenge, that means you, if it doesn't get procced, your Mysterious Challenger isn't going to pull a Revenge out of your deck. Mm -hmm. Which means uh, you don't get the free card, and also that's one card, one more card in your deck that's going to be like a poor draw, so maybe he doesn't even want to play that, but... Isn't it funny how this is considered, like... A pretty good play to like innervate out Ancient of Lore, but in reality, it's just like five mana five five draw a card. Not that insane. Five mana five five draw a card would be insane. If that was a common, it'd be in every deck. Well, that's it's not too far off from Azure Drake. Spell damage is pretty expensive. I think the difference between a five five and a four four is actually pretty huge, though. Yeah, but sometimes this difference in spell damage or not spell damage is really huge. Yeah, that's true. All right, Raffin for one. Oh, ooh! If that gets buffed, I don't think uh, it actually can no, get it's... buffed. If it if the death roll plays first, I think it can get buffed. Mm. But this is not a good spot to go into for the next turn. Actually, if the Nordron got no, I don't know. If it did get buffed, then he could just hear power and swipe for full clear, but. Now Jab's in some trouble. It's the full tree. We did it. This is what I this is what I see constantly on ladder. Oh, I thought you were gonna package. say that. this is what I live for. The full package. Uh. Well, well, the BGH makes it interesting. But he oh, can't boy. guarantee that it goes on to the Mysterious Challenger. He can do a 50-50 by wrathing it. This is a 1-3. Yeah. If he gets it, though, it's huge. Oh, actually, it's on that one. BGH this, too. It doesn't feel as good, though. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it still feels good just to BGH anything, but you're right, it doesn't feel as good. Time waits for no one. And then he's still got to worry about competitive spirit, uh, redemption, or sorry, uh, repentance. I so. think he might not BGH it. I think it's I think it's good to swipe in wrath. Oh, I've got the beast in hmm. I think he might be running out of time there. Competitive That's spirit would, would land on the mysterious challenger anyway. You could have swiped in wrath the seven five. Yeah. And BGH next turn, but you're going to take a lot of damage if you do that. Ooh. Oh, you take the seven hit anyway. I mean, take the same damage. Uh, but you wouldn't clear off. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you're right. I thought there would be one extra minion on board if you did it that way. But it still would have killed off one minion. And, I mean, this looks like it's going to seal up the game, because I don't know how Jab's going to come back from this stage. Yeah, he's there's got a lot so of spells much junk there, and Ragnaros is coming next. Yeah, like he can Wrath, and he can start cleaning things up with uh, with Living Roots, but that's pretty much his whole turn, just removing stuff, and then he has no answer to Rag. I'm not sure if Lead Paint will pay, play Rag. I think if he gets a decent 2 or 3 or 4, he's going to play the... Kings. I think Kings Lots is better here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. If he had whiffed on that draw, maybe. But this does allow him to push through and keep a more resilient board. And now Jab, once again, in a rough spot. 8, 9, oh. 10, 11 damage represented on board. Yeah, he's not dead to the board. So I think this is just uh, the time where you just play a bunch of things. <laughs> oh, the hero power. I think that actually makes it a lot worse. Oh, well, that's going to do it. Uh, he put it on, like, muster for it battle being lethal, it. I guess. Yeah. Uh, because if he had just played Living even, I mean, even if he didn't get Cog Hammer there, he could have done 50-50, Rag kills Dr. Boom, or kills the opponent. Yeah, by trading in. 
And unless the boom bots were magical, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think there was any way to come back there even from from just the rag. Which many times they are magical, but uh, unfortunately, Jab not even able to get to see if they were. Uh, but that's like Pain taking a two to one lead with just Druid remaining. Well, Druid's not great against Mage, and Druid is roughly 50% against Druid. So, um, yeah, it's not terrible for Jab. You can't win this. This is a rematch, and in the first round, Lead Paint went up 2-1 to one and then lost the series. If I remember correctly, yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. Oh no! Wait, did lead paint win? I'm lost. I'm confused. I could just—I just confused myself. Job done. Jab did go down. This, neither of these guys have ramp. This is gonna take a while to get going here. Well, uh, living room start for one player is decent. It allow it just allows for you know chip damage early on, and also it forces your opponent to deal with it. And fitting in hero powers early is tough. But lead paint is gonna try and find. A little bit of additional ramp to give himself an advantage. Well, when you draw two swipes in the same turn, and that turn is two, not so great. Yeah, yeah, I was right. Jab did win. He was down uh, two to one in the series versus Lead Paint, and came back to win three two in the second match of the day. So in round number one. So with these decks that he has, it is doable. That's a good pickup from Lead Paint. Otherwise, he would have been just here powering. Sylvanas has been uh, not that common in the Druid lists, but uh, I think overall it's worked out quite well. It's one of those cards that uh, you kind of don't want to kill to deal with it, and that helps Druid a lot by pushing for 7 extra on top of the 14 combo. Yeah, I really like it. It's a little bit slower, but it's got much more impact. And since Lead Paint just seems to be running a slower list in general, maybe only one combo. Because double Ancient of War plus a Sylvanas. And he hasn't cut the BGH? No. Yeah. Yikes! That's a Totem Golem. But, that's a swipe. Yeah. And boy, I guess he's glad that he had the second one now. Yeah. And he's got Sylvanas into double Ancient of War, so those are all tough cards for Druids to deal with. They basically have to have, uh, he'll have to have two Keeper of the Groves in the next couple of turns in order to deal with both of those. All right, well, I'm not even sure Druid of the Claw is great here. I think I would have considered just charging into it and get rid of it right away. Yeah, it's just, just really annoying. Yeah, now it's awkward because he can't clear everything. He can, like, trade in, but it looks like he's just going to probably go face and ignore it for now. It's risky, but what are you, what are you going to do? Innervate out a hero power to take out the shade? Yeah. Just pushing the damage. And now the shade's oh. gonna be six six. He can guarantee the steal on the shade, and then plop down an ancient of war. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Might be looking at the beginning of the end here for Jeff. Yeah, there are not enough silences in the deck to deal with this board. But he doesn't even need combo. He's got two growing shades. Even just next turn, that's gonna be seventeen damage coming out of his face, just from what's on the board. And he can't even innervate out anything in order to take out even just one of these. And all and these guys next turn are gonna get out of range of, of anything except for like a big game hunter. It's gonna MC Tech an Ancient of War. The new yeah. high of MC Tech. I, I don't even think that would be enough, because Lead Paint is just playing it safe and trading jab concedes, that means Lead Paint is the second player to move on to the playoff stage, joining Dog or Sunday. Well, it looks like that uh, disconnect at the start was uh, potentially a pretty big factor. Uh, it kind of sucks for that to happen. Um, you know, if that didn't happen, he would have had a little bit more play, and you know, maybe he would have got a bit lucky with his Druid. But 
In the end, Lead Paint tech takes the rematch and takes the second seed from uh, today's uh, Group A matches. Yeah, and so it was a fun day. Uh, we saw we got to see Dog play some uh, interesting decks. Uh, we got to see uh, Lead Paint play some pretty standard decks. But both players, uh, it, I, li- I always like to see one in fight and one of the open players move through, just so we have a good mix in the in the playoff stage. So. I'm glad that these two two players made it through. Uh, they are both really strong players, and you can see that their preparation that they put into the deck lineups that they brought uh, worked out well. Uh, unfortunately, like you said, uh, that disconnect from Jab might have played a part in that, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, there's nothing you can do about that, and I do think Lead Paint still deserves uh, definitely to move through. Mm-hmm. Overall, pretty good matches today. Uh, I think the highlight were uh, uh, Dog's decks and, and the way he played played it out his games. Even the games he lost, I think he did uh, exceptionally well to try to maneuver around possible pitfalls. Uh, but in the end, sometimes it gets too many, but still, he uh, he does get the first seed of the day. He was uh, he was the, the player to go undefeated today, along with Lead Paint will advance to the final day on Sunday. Um, I am curious, though, I don't know if you know this, but do you know if the players will be stuck with these decks uh, on Sunday? Yes, they will. I believe uh, they'll have the same decks, but they will have one extra deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, since uh, the Sunday matches are best of sevens, um, they um, will have that extra deck. I will call it a secret deck, uh, which is their, their last deck, since they do have to add one deck. It's not best of seven in a normal sense, where you would just play the fourth deck that you brought. There is still a ban, so they have to have five decks so it adds an, a little extra dynamic. So even though they're bringing the same decks, their their deck lineup, the dynamic of their deck lineup could change going into Sunday because of that extra deck. Should be interesting. Yeah. All right, well, uh, make sure you guys, uh, we got some upcoming events for One Nation of Gamers. Of course, we'll be broadcasting feature tournament number two throughout this weekend. Uh, we'll return tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, I believe that will happen an hour later than it did today. So, uh uh, was today we started at 6 p.m. EDT, so the next couple of days I believe it'll be at 7 p.m. EDT. Oh, sorry, an hour earlier. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, an hour earlier. Um, so make sure you guys tune in those days. Also, uh, next week um, we will be broadcasting the major uh, for the One Nation of Gamers, which will be happening at PAX East. So if you're unable to make it to PAX East, make sure you guys tune in on the Twitch channel here. Uh, if you are able to make it, check out the the, the gaming booth over at PAX East. And uh, you, you guys will get to meet some of the uh, team members from Archon, from Team Liquid, and from Cloud9. So that's going to be some really cool stuff. Make sure you tune into that. And, of course, the next Open for One Nation of Gamers will be on April 30th. Uh, Crip, are you going to PAX? Don't think so, but we'll see. Don't think so, but we'll see. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we weren't able to get the Crip Watch mobile app. Uh, but there will be a mobile app that will let you guys... Uh, that One Nation of Gamers will be uh, releasing shortly. That'll let you guys keep track of some of your pros and where they'll be for signings. So keep. I also want to give a shout out to uh, the sponsor of the event, Geico, of course, uh, who's a title sponsor. Video Game Voters Network, who are encouraging all gamers to get out there and vote. So head over to videogamevoters.com for more information on that. And of course, Cyber Power PC. So if you guys want to enter in to win a Cyber Power PC, head over to geico.onog.gg. For more information about that and to enter into win, but that's going to be it, Crip. Crip, do you have any final words on nope, the day today? Good. Final thoughts? I hope uh, the next few days will be uh, at least as entertaining, and uh, we'll have to see shortly what that'll be like. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to Group A of Feature. We'll return tomorrow again, one hour earlier than today. So make sure you tune in for the continuation of Feature Tournament Number Two. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.